First up, though, uh, let's bring in Jonathan Sheridan live from Big Securities uh, in Sydney for more. Let's just kick it off with those RBA minutes uh, today out, obviously, just right now. I guess nothing too new from these minutes, given we heard from Glenn Stevens overnight. Good morning, Ingrid. That's right. Yes, uh, much as expected, I think. And uh, you've seen that in the market reaction with the currency basically doing nothing. The, the bond yield curve also has done nothing, just slightly tightened by about one point across the curve, um, just on the, on the slightly hawkish tone, I thought. So let's talk about what we saw overnight then in bond markets. In terms of RBA Governor Glenn Stevens' comments, the live comments overnight in New York, what sort of reaction did it have in, in the pricing for a rate cut going forward? Yeah, look, I think um, the rate cut pricing hasn't really changed. The, the futures market is showing about a 60% chance of a cut, and, and I think that's been stable for the last few days. Um, what we've got, if you see the survey of the economists on Bloomberg, it's much more clear cut. I think 27 out of 28 economists surveyed think that there will be a cut in the next meeting. But um, actually, in the last few months, the futures market has been a really good indicator of what's happened. Um, the surprise first easing, notwithstanding, of course, um, but we, we've expected a couple of cuts since then and they haven't happened, which has been more in line with the futures pricing. Mm. What about the um, Aussie dollar moves? I mean, we're at 70, just above 77 US cents right now. Of course, that's after rising to above 78 US cents with some sort of, uh, you know, weakness, I guess, in the greenback, I should say, over the past couple of weeks. Is there now just downside risk for the Aussie? I mean, in terms of where you're seeing the risk now, is it, is it all to the downside? Yeah, look, I think what we'll see in, in the Aussie is a period of volatility. Historically, we've seen, uh, interestingly enough, over overall, the, when the U.S. economy outperforms, as a, as a, in relation to the, the trade-weighted index, the mm -hmm. currency also outperforms. But if you break that down somewhat against the different types of, uh, of currencies, so you have the commodity currencies or the, the emerging market cur currencies or the developed market currencies, interestingly, it actually depreciates uh, against the commodity-based currencies. Now, that, that's obviously uh, the, the opposite to what the, the great consensus is um, yeah. and it must be said that we're in very different times you know with QE going on around the world that we that we haven't seen before in those previous uh, examples of US outperformance so I, I think in our house view here is that we'll see a period of volatility and and that could you know that could mean we get back to 80 cents perhaps but the the longer term towards the end of the year and into the next 12 months is that we think we'll see the Aussie down around around the 70 cent mark. John we've been talking a lot about the property market obviously and, and foreign investment into the property market really over over the past year as, as house prices in Sydney in particular have continued to rise and we've heard the RBA obviously discuss it and Glenn Stevens overnight. We've also seen uh, a property group, the Kayser Property Group, become the first Chinese company to default on an offshore bond issue. Can you just talk us through the implications of this on the property market but also on the bond market as well? Yeah, that's right. So, as you said, Kaiser Property Group have overnight just basically said that they're not going to pay their interest on one of their bond issues. Um, they've got about $10.5 billion of US dollar debt uh, offshore from mainland China, um, and they're not paying the, the first instalment due on one of those debts. So, it's the first default that we've seen in that Chinese property sector for offshore bonds. We did see a default on the, in the onshore bond market last, uh, sorry, about three or four months ago. Um, the implications in that one, the market's really already priced that in. Those bonds were trading at 62 cents in the dollar pre the official default notice and they went down to about 55. Um, I think the, the market's fairly confident that the central bank will keep easing, uh, easing conditions and providing stimulus to the, particularly that property sector as we saw with that 100 basis point reduction in the reserve requirement that they announced yesterday. So the, the market reaction to that was pretty muted but uh, I think investment in, in the bond space in the Chinese property sector it should be viewed as a, a fairly high risk proposition at the moment. All right, Jonathan Sheridan, we'll leave it there. Uh, live for Fixed Securities. Great. Thanks, Ingrid.